Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Learning Electronics. In this lecture, we are going to study chook converter. In the part number one of chook converter, let us see what are the topics we are going to cover. First one is difference between buck and boost converter. Second one is need of chook converter. Then we are going to see difference between buck boost and chook converter. And last one is features of chook converter. The working and the output waveforms of this chook converter we are going to cover in the part number 2 of this chook converter. So before starting this video please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon so that you can get more updated videos from here. Now to understand the need of this chook converter we have to see the difference between buck and boost converter and why we are designing this chook converter if we are already having three converters that is buck converter boost converter and buck boost converter so for understanding the need of this chook converter we have to understand the difference between buck and boost converter and see the demerits and merits of this buck and boost converter first we will take the buck converter first point is during fault conditions of the load di by dt is limited by the inductor here this is the circuit diagram of buck converter here you can see in the load side we have connected one inductor so whenever there is a fault in the load at that time what happens a heavy current flows through this load to the ground like this so this heavy current will be limited by this inductor present at the output side second point is that high voltage rating switch is required here you can see the switch sw is connected in series with this source so in this buck converter we know that the buck converter is always used to step down the input voltage that means the input voltage Vs will be greater than the output voltage V0 so this high input voltage should be handled by this switch SW which is present in series with this source voltage here therefore high voltage rating switch is required in the buck converter third point is that input current is discontinuous in nature here you can see whenever the switch is in the on condition at that time it will act as short circuit so in the short circuit condition the source will be connected with the load but whenever this switch SW is in the off condition at that time it will act as open circuit so during the open circuit condition the load will be disconnected from the source therefore the source current is will become discontinuous in nature in the buck converter fourth point is that smoothing filter is normally required to provide single polarity output voltage and unidirectional current in case this input dc signal is produced by the rectifier at that time what happens there is a harmonics in the dc signal so if there is no smoothing filter in the input side this harmonic present in this dc signal will be introduced in the supply line so to reduce this harmonic present in the input input signal we use a LC smoothing filter in front of this SW switch that means in this place between this SW switch and this DC voltage source we use a LC smoothing filter which will provide a single polarity output voltage and unidirectional current next we will discuss the merits and demerits of boost converter first one is during fault conditions of the switch di by dt of the fault is limited by the inductor here you can see the inductor is connected in the input side of this boost converter whenever there is fault occurring in the switch when this sw switch in the on condition at that time heavy current will flow through this switch to the ground like this so to limit this heavy current we are using this inductor so during the fault condition this inductor will limit this heavy fault current second point is that input current is continuous in the boost converter whenever this sw switch is in the on condition that means it will act as short circuit at that time this inductor present in the input side will smooth out the input current and whenever this sw switch will act as open circuit during the off period of the switch at that time the input will be connected with the load so always during the on condition of the switch also during the off condition of the switch also in the boost converter the input current is always continuous in nature third point is large filter capacitor and larger inductor is required in the boost converter we know that in the boost converter the input current is very high so larger inductor is required in the input side and during the on period of the switch when this sw switch will be in the on condition at that time this diode will go into the off condition that means the source will be disconnected from the load during the on condition of the switch at that time this capacitor alone has to handle the load that means this capacitor has to provide the voltage for the load therefore the high value of capacitor or larger filter capacitor is needed in the boost converter during the 
on period of the switch fourth point is that high peak current has to flow through the power transistor here the input current of the boost converter will be very high so the high peak current will be flowing through this sw switch therefore higher current rating power transistor is needed in the boost converter and last point is that due to variation of the duty ratio charging and discharging of filter capacitor c occurs very fast so here you can see during the on period of the switch this diode will go into the off condition at that time what happens this capacitor alone has to handle the load so whenever there is a variation in the duty ratio at that time what happens the load voltage also varies if d varies then the load load voltage v not also varies if load voltage varies then the load current i not will be varying and in the on condition of this switch sw this capacitor has to provide this load current i not therefore there is a heavy discharging and charging of the capacitor occurring during the on period of the switch due to fluctuations of the load current i not now we'll understand the need of chuck converter and why we are designing the chuck converter if you are already having three converters this is the circuit diagram of boost converter this is the circuit diagram of buck converter now we have studied there are some merits of the boost converter and there are some merits of the buck converter if we combine the merits of buck converter and boost converter then we can eliminate the demerits of both these converters so by combining this buck and boost converter we can design this chuck converter here so for this what we will do we will take the input side of this boost converter because during the fault conditions of this switch the heavy current through the switch will be limited by this input side inductor here so first we will take the input side if of this boost converter then we will take the output side of this buck converter because during the fault conditions of the load fault current will be limited by this inductor present at the output side of this buck converter so whenever we will combine the input side of the boost converter and the output side of the buck converter through a energy transfer capacitor c then the chuck converter will be formed like this so this is the input side of the boost converter and this is the output side of the buck converter which is combined using this energy transfer capacitor c1 now we will see the features of chuck converter it is similar to buck and boost converter because it can step down and step up the input voltage vs as buck and boost converter second point is that it has advantages of both buck and boost converter because we have combined the input side of the boost converter and output side of the buck converter through a energy transfer capacitor c1 to form this chuck converter therefore it has advantages of both buck and boost converter third point is the input current and output current both are continuous in nature so to make the input current continuous we have a inductor in the input side and to make the output current constant we have one inductor in the output side in the chuck converter therefore the input and output current both are continuous in nature in the chuck converter next point is that the output voltage is negative when we do the derivation at that time we will understand the output voltage will be negative in the chuck converter as it was in the buck boost converter in the buck boost converter also we always get inverted voltage with respect to the input source voltage next point is chuck converter is based on energy transfer between input and output through the capacitor here one capacitor is used in between the input side and output side to do the energy transfer between input and output now we will see the difference between chuck converter and buck boost converter this is the circuit diagram of the chuck converter and this is the circuit diagram of the buck boost converter in the buck boost converter the energy transfer is associated with a inductor present between the input side and the output side whereas in the chuck converter the energy transfer is associated with a capacitor c1 present between the input side and the output side second point is that in the buck boost converter the input current is discontinuous in nature whereas in the chuck converter the input current and output current both are continuous in nature so this is the main advantage of chuck converter over the buck boost converter third one is as you can see in the circuit diagram in the chuck converter more number of 
components are used as compared to bug boost converter in the chuck converter additional capacitors or inductors are used here only one inductor and one capacitor is used whereas in the chuck converter two inductors and two capacitors are used here so hope you have understood the topic thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe my channel for more updates